there, guys. So I wanted to give a uh, a life lesson right now, and it is actually um, it's sort of based off of this whole Tyler Perry thing, but you know the, the bigger picture is that you know. I mean, we know how stories go. We know how things in American media goes. You're hot for two weeks, and then next week, probably next week, we're not going to even hear anything about Tyler Perry for a while, unless he's trying to promote some kind of movie or something. But uh, before it goes away, um, I do, I want to say, I want to give this lesson about everything. So... In essence, this really isn't about Tyler Perry. It's really it's bigger than Tyler Perry. It's it's more so about you, ladies. Um so where this actually came from, um a lot of times for a few years, actually for many years, I have been I will wake up in the middle of the night, uh, depending on what time I go to sleep. I've been going to sleep a lot later the past few years but for many many years in my life I always woke up at what they uh, have called the witching hour somewhere between uh, 12 and 3 or I'm gonna say like 1 and 3 in the morning really like 1 and 2 12 ish whatever at that time and um, I have a lot of my best deep thoughts <laughs> Deep thoughts at that time. Excuse me, y'all. I'm sorry. And um, I do a lot of my meditating, my even speaking with ancestors, um, things like that. So anyway, long story short, um, I was up early and I was going through um, a couple of YouTube videos. And I don't usually really like listen to videos and stuff like that at that time because it'll like wake me completely up and then I can't go back to sleep. Because normally if I wake up during that time, um, I can usually fall back to sleep and maybe go back to sleep again for maybe three or four more hours. And so... <clears throat> but anyway, I did, and I came across um, this channel. It doesn't even have a lot of videos because, like, I looked on the thing, I was looking at the videos, and I subscribed, and I'm like, hmm, they only got just, like, a few videos. So I don't know if it's a new channel or just what, but it's one of those knowledge teaching channels. Um, it's actually a... It is actually a teaching called Stoism, and and I, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Now, before you guys go off, I, it's an ancient Greek and, and Rome type teaching from back in the day, and um, I was going to go ahead and read the, you know, read the whole thing about it and everything, but you guys can do that. It's not really. I want to bring out the points that it talked about when it was um the video is actually um i'm sorry give me one second here should have had this before i before it came on um so it's talking about the dark side of, of being um of being kind and being too kind too self-sacrificing and things like that um now just real quick before i get into this um, this is not like some teaching or whatever that I follow. I look at various teachings and I look at a lot of different stuff and I get, um, answers. I get wisdom. I get knowledge. I like to hear many, many different perspectives is, is what I like to do. And, um, not necessarily like I don't follow the teaching but if it, even if it is a teaching like I don't even really know I know it said that it was a teaching back in uh, Greek and Rome you know 
So, but anyway, I um I want to share this with you guys. I'm gonna don't want to take up too much time and 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 make the video too long, but I want to go over these different principles about kindness and uh, kind of being overly kind and overly giving. And the reason that I uh, wanted to talk about this is because I saw myself in it. Uh, man, for like probably most of my life, I've always been a giver. I've always been an overgiver. I've always been a sacrificer. I would sacrifice myself, my happiness, my everything for um, to prove things to people. I've sacrificed it in my marriages. I have sacrificed myself just literally putting everybody before myself, people before myself, my children before myself. And like I say, in my marriages. And I have in the last few years come to realize that literally I really didn't that it wasn't showing self-love you know we all say we love ourselves but self-love is it, you prove you can prove self-love and um I don't believe that I was loving myself because I was putting everybody's needs and wants and, and even my jobs like even on my jobs I would literally sacrifice myself my time I'd go in whenever they needed me um, I'd overwork. <laughs> I would definitely overwork um, until it became an issue with, you know, I hurt my back, I hurt my shoulder and got like all kinds of illnesses and things that you can't get that back. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't get your time back. You can't get what you gave and what you offered back. And I know it's really just a woman thing where women, so many times women will self-sacrifice like they really will and this is not a black woman thing this is a woman thing period you know one of the last women that i even talked to this about was a a, a white lady you know she was um talking about how tired she was and all the stuff that she does in her life and things like that you know and i just literally told her like it's just a woman thing that's what we do we give we nurture we take care of literally everybody except for ourselves so I want to share um, this with you guys because that that is what that teaching was on. And when I was um, listening to all of this, because I listened to it for a second time, I listened to it the other night. And then today I was like, you know what? I, I want to hear that again because it was the middle of the night or whatever, you know, in the middle of the morning, early, early morning. And I, I want to hear it again. I want to, you know, really get it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm looking at myself, you know what I'm saying? Um, even though I don't really behave that way much anymore, I've learned and grown. But as I'm listening to it, I started thinking about that Tyler Perry thing. And I'm like, man, you know, that's almost the same thing that Tyler Perry is literally telling black women to do is to literally self-sacrifice yourself, you know? So I put the things that I got from that video and I want to tell you guys about it right now. So uh, the first point, and this is not in any order, it's just points that I'm going to talk about and then maybe elaborate on just a little bit if I can. Um, the first point that I, that I took from that video is that they won't give back to you or prioritize themselves above you by by nature by nature so so because the way i wrote this some some of this stuff i have to explain so basically what it's saying is that when you overgive when you overshare when you over and we're talking about Tyler Perry's um saying that black women should be okay with paying all of the bills or whatever and this man that you love and he's a good man and all these kind of things should um be allowed to just pay a one bill or something if he don't have it um anyway i'm gonna leave that right there so but th the first point in this is that normally by nature 
when you give out of an abundance or give out of out of an overabundant heart, whatever, normally people don't prioritize you and give you what you give them and to the degree that you give them. That's just like a natural thing. Um, second is that they don't usually stop being the receiver and start giving to you normally by nature. They don't usually do that because of the fact they feel like, well, you've been doing it. Why are you changing now? Or like, this is, this is how we came into this relationship. Like this is how we set the tone so why do you want to change things now you know what i'm saying so normally in that situation it won't be the man that would come to you and be like you know look we're we gonna do this different i'm gonna pay this 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 and this and then you'll pay that or uh, we're gonna we're gonna do all i'm gonna take all these bills and you're gonna take this and this and this you know normally However you come into the relationship and how things are set, and if, especially if the tone is set for something like that, and we know that finances is one of the biggest things that a lot of relationships in today. Uh, many, many divorces are, are, are somewhere based on some type of financial something. We know that already as well. Uh, when you overgive, when you continue to give out of your kindness and 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 self-sacrifice you become moody you are are literally neglecting yourself you, you just have a tendency to neglect yourself because you're you're in the mode of just giving 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 to them and you it's it's normal to neglect your own needs when you're in that type of a mindset um you become very tired <laughs> you just tired. You become frustrated. At the end of the day, you become frustrated. Uh and you become disappointed. Um Yeah, I'm going to move on. Um But one let me let me stop right there real quick though because the one I want to bring up is the tired and the frustrated. If you are a woman working whatever job, whatever, going every day i mean it's probably a full-time job or whatever uh and you this other person is is more of the receiver there is a lot of a lot of tendency for you first of all yeah to become very tired because i'm not gonna lie when i was self-sacrificing and even well, from my job or my marriage or whatever i would get tired like i would be physically tired and a lot of times that person don't accept the fact that you're tired. They're looking at it like, this is what you do. Like, how, what you mean you're going to stay home today? We need money. We got to go to work, whatever, you know, uh, and being frustrated. And the frustration comes because nine times out of 10 in a situation like that, that person isn't always very understanding of how you feel. They're not very understanding of, you know, well, I don't want to do this anymore, or I'm tired, or, you know, I feel overwhelmed. Nobody talks about how, how much people get overwhelmed when they give so much. That's equivalent, or that's like another word for being, for, for, for having burnout. Um, last few years of my life, that's why I have, like, I'm literally part-time right now, because I've all my life I've been, and this is since I've been 18 years old, I've worked and I've been, a, I've worked full time. And in the medical field, if anybody know anything about the medical field, it ain't nothing easy or soft or a light day in the medical field. It's, it's, it's always go, 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 go. It's always, you got to give a hundred percent. Um, and you, you do have a tendency to, to get frustrated and overwhelmed and, you know, and, and burnt out. Like you, you, you literally do. And okay. So let me stop there. Um, uh, they don't by nature and this, we're talking about, I'm not saying nature. I'm talking about human nature. Uh, they don't by nature give you what you, what you give them. 
just just normally your energy is not matched like they're not they're not normally going to if you have given all this right here let's say you did it for three years normally when it's time for them to give they're not going to give to the extent that you gave sometime it's because they just can't they just don't have the ability to do that they're a different person um second of all they probably just don't want to third of all you know a, a lot of times what i've heard and as cold-hearted as it is a lot of times i've heard after i've given 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 which is one of the things that's maybe stopped um I've heard people, people will look me dead in my eye and after everything that I've done and given and sacrificed to them. And they have told me, I didn't tell you to do that. Nobody asked you. I didn't ask you to do that for me. You, you did it because you wanted to. I didn't ask you to do it. And, and that right there, I, and it's true. It is absolutely true. But I wasn't expecting it. It, it hurt. And, but I had to swallow it because they're right. You, you didn't ask me to do it. You know what I'm saying? I did it out of the kindness of my heart and out of my love and out of my whatever and, and out of a habit because that is just me by nature. And I've had, you know, like I said, I've had to self-evaluate so many times and, and realize my priorities and, and boundaries and things like that. But let me go on. Um, it will become an expectation and people will not do what they should because you enabled them. Mm, that is so huge right there. Being an enabler. A lot of times you don't think about that. You giving because you're giving out of your heart. You're giving out of the fact that you want the relationship to work or the fact that, you know, well, he don't have it or he ain't making as much as as me you know what i'm saying he is just a um hell i don't know he 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 worked at mcdonald's and i'm a lawyer whatever um and so he he probably won't ever unless he go to school because it ain't never too late for somebody to go to school you know this whole thing of you know a lot of times in my opinion making these men baby fight I don't really get it because he can go to school just like you can. Maybe he he's won't be a lawyer. I don't know. Whatever it is he wants to do, he can he can go and do it. Uh, there's also a such thing as two jobs. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't get that either. Why why you can't get two jobs? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, but yeah, when you give 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 give, you put people in a almost dependent see mode of on you they become dependent on you and a lot of times they won't they won't even try to get up and go out and do the things that they should do or that you want them to do because you keep doing it for them you keep taking care of everything i mean why would i get up and go and uh get two jobs or or go to school to further myself or what like why would i do that if you're okay with the way that we are if you're paying all the bills and you're okay with it and you've been doing it from the beginning of this relationship why are you changing now why should you why should i be obligated to get up and go and do anything just because you feel like i should i don't feel like i should because otherwise if i felt like i should i would have already done it and that's really just the truth of the matter if if he was going to get up and do thus and so, he would have already done it, or he would he would have some type of long term term plan to eventually. Oh, when well, such and such months or whatever, I'm going to do whatever. But you don't want to be an enabler, and that many times is is the um, is the outcome of you giving, giving, giving. Is you you make people dependent on you and you become uh, and you make them you become the enabler um what happens okay that's something i wrote i'm gonna talk about that later so you will be seen as weak and treated as such and expected to continue to do it um many times 
when you overgive or when people keep coming to you and you always say yes and you know it almost becomes a thing of well i already know i can go to such and such you're gonna say yeah or you already like take take a job for example let's call uh such and such because you know she always come in you know what i'm saying so you're gonna always be that go-to person you know or your family Call up such and such. She'll give you. She'll give you the money that you need. She always give you the money. She don't never say no. She got the money. Ask her. She gonna always say yeah. And it's just like then. A lot of times, what happens is when you finally get tired of that and you say no or whatever. What's the first thing that happens? People get mad at you. That's the first thing I have. They get very mad at you, and they almost get an entitlement to. How dare you say no? Like, what do you mean? No, y you don't say no. You always say, yeah, you know, and they, they get very angry at you for prioritizing yourself, saying no, saying I'm tired, saying, I don't want to do it no more. Whatever it is that you say, they're going to be pissed at you and they probably will continue to hound you even more. Because they like, yeah, no, nah, she she not gonna tell me no. I'm I'm gonna get this such and such. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm gonna get this money, or, or you gonna give me what? You know what I'm saying? So they don't let you say no. They don't let you say no. Um, I want to bring up. I don't know why this just hit my head. This my just hit my mind, but because it did, I want to share this. Do you guys remember that movie, uh, Spike Lee movie? I think it was do the right thing, but it was the one where with Gator. Gator was Samuel L. Jackson. I think that was um Holly Berry was like his girlfriend or whatever. They were homeless or whatever. I think I'm putting that together right. But Ozzy Davis and um D D um oh what is her name? Ozzy Davis and his wife. I Y'all got to forgive me because I'm not thinking correctly. I don't know. But um, they were the parents. And he went there one night, basically to his mama, trying to get some money for drugs. The mama was literally like, I don't have nothing. No, I'm not going to do it. Like, I don't have anything. And Gator started literally like, you know, mama, come on. I know you got it. Mama. You, you always got it, mama. You got it. You know what I'm saying? He started dancing and shuffling around because, you know, that's what she liked and she'd always give in or whatever. But she was just like, I ain't got it. You know, I think he went and got her purse. He started kind of like pushing her around, roughing her up. And this was an old lady, you know, in this movie uh, or the, the depiction. She was an older woman. And Ozzy Davis came out there. He was the dad. And we already know the ending to that. He wind up shooting Gator, Gator dead. You know what I'm saying? But I said that to say that a lot of times that that's extreme, but that is the extent to when you always say yes, when you always give, when you, I mean, I don't know how long Gator had been on drugs and I know this is a fake, this is fake. It's a movie. It's a, you know, but she might have been given to Gator for the last 10 years, but he was on drugs. Five years. I don't know. But now you saying no. And I mean, drugs are an addiction. <laughs> having to live is an addiction. You know what I'm saying? Like having to live. If you're paying everything for this relationship and you start saying no, or you start putting the brakes on or saying something like, well, I'm not going to have the money to pay such and such this time. All of a sudden, and you're taking care of him, dude's going to start looking at his livelihood. Like, okay, well, if you finna start like not paying bills or if you can't pay this bill and I ain't paying nothing but a light bill, okay, you messing with my livelihood now. So like, what's going on with this? Like, what, you know, did, did we not going to have this. And it almost puts you in a situation to where you better go to work. You got to go to work now. You got to maintain this lifestyle. That's another reason why it's not good to give, 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 and not good for a woman to put herself in that situation because, you know, things come up. 
let me continue because I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, more of that in a minute. So you will be seen as weak, and uh, you will be expected to continue to do it. Um, uh, let me see. Also, you attract what you vibrate as. Um, if a person sees you as weak and self-sacrificing, and will uh, and and takes advantage. Okay, so what it was talking about with the vibrations is when you become overwhelmed, when you overgive, when you overdo, when you literally get yourself to a point of burnout, uh, what happens with that is that that lowers your frequency because you're tired. You're, you're all those things that I just said, and it lowers your frequency and your vibration. You actually become more prone to being sick your immune system is affected your stress is becomes very very high and as we know stress is literally one of the number one killers especially uh, for like high blood pressure and things like that your immune system drops so you become more prone to get illnesses and things so um not being able uh, not being able to care for yourself, put yourself first, love yourself, and vibrate on a higher frequency, those are the things that keep you good. But the self-sacrificing, the giving, giving, all that stuff lowers your your uh, your vibration, raises the stress, and all kinds of stuff. Um Uh, in this world. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's another one. Um, human nature says that because that self-sacrificing nature is not prominent in this world, like it's not like everybody ain't like that. Like it's kind of rare for you to be like that. It's a rare individual to be just completely so self-sacrificing like that. Um, it, it, it causes people to look at you suspiciously you being overly helpful um causes you them to look at you as if you have like sus uh suspicious intentions or are you being suspect like wh what are you doing why are you giving me all this like what do you want like what what are you really after like what, what what are you trying to do you know what i'm saying like people will still take it but after a while they're gonna be like well why are you doing this? Why you know what I'm saying? Because the average person isn't like that. And when they meet a person like that, it's almost like what you about? Like what 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 you trying, you know what I'm saying? And people will look at you suspiciously. Um, but I want to bring up a couple of things that I have written down here. One of the things I I wrote down, and this is once again, talking about all this uh, sacrificing and them not paying or paying very little as far as bills. Because um, actually, when I went back and listened to that um, Tyler Perry, what he actually said, the man was working. He said the man was working. And which, like I said, it, it made me think, well, hell, if he already worked and he's good. He, you know, he ain't just sitting around technically being a bum. Why can't he get two jobs and kind of help out some more, you know? But one, a couple of things that I said was that what happens if you, what happens if you are no longer happy in that job? Um, there are so many people, so many people. Matter of fact, there's an epidemic in China. I forget the name of it. But it's it it's because they work so hard to please their parents and to get into the education that or the education and career that their parents push them towards. Um, that a lot of times, once they get there and once they achieve and once they've done all this here, they're not happy. They get a burnout. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to do it anymore because literally they done it for their family or they did it for their um for for their parents to make the parents happy um and that happens a lot um 
a lot of times people get degrees and get into the family business or say they just get into some type of, of a career that they wind up later on finding out that they're not happy doing. Like, I don't like it. There, that's actually something that's going on right now with nurses. There is a lot of nurses right now who they may love the work, they love caring for people, they love giving, but they're burnt out and they are sick of the whole, just the way the whole medical field has is changing now. Uh, teachers are another one. Teachers are another one who are like dropping like flies. Like they're just looking to do something else. So the point I want to make with that is that both of those careers, a teacher and a nurse or whatever, now they're not filthy rich or anything like that, but they're, they could live decent. So say, for example, um, you're in this position that you're making most of the money and they're, your partner is not contributing much or just very, very little. What is going to happen if you're tired of, of being in that career? And you say, well, babe, I want to go back to school. Or babe, you know, I don't want to do this no more. I want to try doing something else or whatever. And more than likely trying something else or going back to school, somewhere down the line, your finances may suffer. Or it may take a few months while you're in school or however long while you're in school, a couple of years, whatever, and your lifestyle decreases and so so that you can do something else or so that you can retrain for something else. And once that lifestyle, like I said before, becomes in jeopardy, that person who's sitting at home really not doing anything they're looking at it like, you know, look, see, you messing with my livelihood now. Like, you know, you shaking things up right now. And I was cushy and comfy. I was good, you know, sitting here while you paying all the bills and everything. And now you talking about you want to go to school. Now you talking about you don't want to be a, a, a lawyer no more or whatever. You know, you, it ain't just about you. It's about me now. And what if you got kids? You know what I'm saying? So, and they can't make that type of money or they're not making that type of money. It's going to be a drop in finance. It's going to be a whole drop in lifestyle. And people ain't, ain't happy with shaking up their lifestyle and having to live lower and with less. And then you're going to start having the arguments. Then you're still going to start having the fights. Then you're going to start having, um, you know, those financial difficulties where, you know, they're looking at you like, well, this is your fault. You're the one don't want to do it anymore. But you're genuinely tired. You're genuinely burned out. You genuinely don't want to do it anymore. You're genuinely going to the office every day, just looking at the walls, waiting to five o'clock or whatever. Like you're in a mundane situation, but you got to stay there because you got people depending on you or a person depending on you. Uh, that's a problem. That's a huge problem because you're obligated now. That puts you in an obligated situation from the jump, which is why you shouldn't even go into that or deal with that or do that. Um, what happens if you, yeah, that's another thing. What happens if you get sick? Now, I want to talk about this just a little bit because, like I said before, women by nature usually are very, very self-sacrificing. Um, and a lot of times women uh, will sacrifice their health for they're still working, they're taking care of the kids, they're taking care of this, taking care of the house, taking care of the husband, whatever. They ain't been to no doctor. They're not really, they got a pain somewhere that they're ignoring. You know, they know they don't feel good. They know they don't feel well. And they're still going because I got to take care of all of this right here. So um, that happens all the time. It happened with me. It's the reason that I literally had to have a, a major surgery. I'm not going to go into it, but I had to have a major surgery because I was dedicating myself to take care of my husband um, that I talked to you guys about that he was a, a disabled vet and I was taking care of him. I was homeschooling. 
I hadn't been to the doctor like I had been before I met him. I was going to the doctor all the time. But, you know, I kind of sacrificed and gave everything to him because he was sick and it was always something coming up with him. And so I neglected myself. Um, I've had so many friends, y'all. I, I can't even, so many good friends, women that I love that have died literally in their 30s and their 40s. I could think of, well, one of my friends, my best friend in Houston, uh, she died of cancer, though. She had cancer, actually, when I met her. She was in remission and everything, but uh, she died. She was like 42, 43 years old at that time. I had a cousin who got sick. She was my, I, I call her my best friend slash cousin. She was my cousin, but she was my best friend. I loved her so much. She died in her 30s, right after she had a baby. She had a baby. I think that baby maybe turned a year, year and a half, and she passed away. She had um, a disease. It was kind of a rare disease, but it affected her heart, and she passed away. Um, had another good friend, Ramona. Uh, Ramona had lupus, um, and her lupus began to get really, really bad. She, uh, no, no, she didn't have lupus. She had sickle cell. And uh, that sickle cell began to just kind of mess with her real bad. By the time when she passed away, I was no longer in Houston. But me and her did, you know, keep in contact. I remember going up to the hospital one time and seeing her. She was uh, having kidney failure at that time. I mean, she was just, it was just bad. It was just really, really bad. But Ramona was in her 30s. She was in her thirties, uh, had gotten married, been married by five or six years. She had a little girl, uh, maybe five, six years old. She was a little girl at that time. Um, who else? My friend, Sheila. Sheila actually passed away of, of HIV, but, um, uh, still sick, still a young woman. She was in her, uh, probably her late forties. She passed away. You know what I'm saying? And and a lot of these women were not taking care of themselves. Um, had another, we weren't like close, 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 but she was a friend of like the group of women that I was friends with. And um, this lady eventually, um, I don't, you know what? I don't know if she passed away because I have not, she actually, she moved to Dallas, but I know that she went blind because of complications with diabetes. Um, and of course, these are these are things that can happen really to anybody. You know what I'm saying? But still, the, the fact remains, what if your health becomes affected is what I'm saying. That's the whole point to it. You know what I'm saying? And there's no time limit on, on death. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't nothing written that, oh, you can't die in your 20s. Oh, you can't die in your, like, it's nothing written to say that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not necessarily trying to say that, you know, their lifestyle or whatever caused them to, to pass away. But what I'm saying is that if you're in a situation, you're the primary breadwinner, especially as a woman, this man is basically totally dependent on you. What is going to happen if anything happens to your health, what happens? You, you know, and this is a sickness, God forbid, this is a sickness where you won't get better in a couple of weeks. You won't get better in a month. This is a long-term sickness that you may or may not recover from. I mean, the, the, the ideal thing is for you to eventually recover and be good again. But life happens. Things happen. You know what I'm saying? And you may have savings. You may have had all this money. But even with the savings, what happens when you diminish the savings? Because at the end of the day, you're still taking, you're not, not no, no more, you don't, you're not generating new money to come into the house because you're not working because you've gotten sick. So you're at this point basically living maybe off your savings. So you're living off your savings. This person, like like we said, is not working and you deplete your savings. Hospital bills. I mean, it's so, y'all already know. I don't need to go into that, but y'all already know. You get it. You get what I'm saying. 
Uh, and with him not making the kind of money to help sustain the lifestyle, he can't get up and go to work and, and hold everything down. He can't do it. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it is best, especially for you as a woman, to not even get yourself into a situation like that. Like I said, I have a friend right now. She's very sick. She's had so many surgeries right now. Just last year, she not only had uh, a brain surgery, she had some surgery to um, to release some type of brain, some type of fluid and stuff that was like up around her neck and stuff. Like I don't know, it was a thyroid or something that was going on, but she had surgery on that. And so, at the end of the day, you know it is causing a change in her lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? And she still ain't totally well. You know what I'm saying? But despite that, despite that, these are things that can happen. These are things just for you to think of. At the end of the day, it's everybody's right and decision to do whatever it is that they want to do in life. Uh, but what I will say as I end this video is love yourself and put yourself first. Putting yourself first is always going to be, that's going to be one of the main things that's going to stop uh, a, um, a user, a manipulator, and a person who's trying to take advantage of you. If somebody knows that when they call you up, you're going to go ahead and jump up and go and do it, they're going to always look for you to, to be that person. But if somebody knows that, the chances, there's a chance you could say no. Like, and that don't mean that you're a mean person. But if they know that you're not going to jump up and just go self-sacrifice and you're going to be like, well, I have such and such, such to do. Or, you know, I got to see what I got to do first. And, you know, I got such and such, such and such plan. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. They won't always be so quick to just up and jump and expect you to do something. If, if you understand what I'm saying. So loving yourself is putting yourself first and putting your needs at the forefront. You know what I'm saying? What does it look like? You need to go to the doctor yourself, but you spending all your time, gas money and, and everything else, running everybody else to the doctor, going, taking everybody else to the doctor, telling everybody else they need to take care of themselves and you ain't been to the doctor in three years. You see what I'm saying? So. Um, that's a little lesson I guess I threw in there about self-love but self-love really does stop people putting up boundaries stops people it stops people from trying to take advantage of you and from taking advantage from you, uh, advantage of you and from expecting you to always do and to always be anybody that's going to allow you to self-sacrifice to the extent of harming yourself, harming your your health, harming uh, your well-being, harming your mind, going into into uh, going into burnout is not a person in my opinion that that actually loves and cares about you. Um, somebody that is going to allow you. That's why I said in that last video, I said in that video that any man who calls himself a man and has any type of semblance of being a man is not going to let his woman pay all the bills. She go to work. She take care of everything. I'm going to live this nice cushy life and I'm just going to pay one bill literally resting in my femininity because that is a feminine trait that, that that's what women do like it or not um and he's not gonna feel good about himself he's not going to feel as if he's a man in that type of a situation and how would you feel knowing that she's doing all of this and she don't get no time off and she still got to do this and she still got to do it's, it's kind of like my friend right, like, right now, like she's a perfect example, even though I don't want to keep putting her stuff out there. Like she does everything for the house. 
everything. And she's expected to do everything for the house, including pay everything. And it's just not, man. I'm going to get off of that. But at the end of the day, ladies, take care of yourself. Love yourself. Put your boundaries up. Um, most of you ladies are smart. You are intelligent. I don't even have to give this message. But there are truly men out here, uh, the lowest of the low kind of men that are out here who really think that this is okay. They're calling themselves house husbands. And they're really good and they're okay with this. And my thing is, like I keep saying, if that is the agreement, if that is what y'all going to do, I would think there needs to be some type of expectation of when this is going to end or when are you going to get another job or when are you going to get a job or when are you going to start making more money or something to help her out. Now, so many of these men, as I close, um, compare it to women. Well, women been doing it. Women do it. Whatever. Yeah, but women, okay, usually when there's a woman in the home and the man is up out working, that's usually what the man does. The, mo the man usually gets up, goes out, works, brings the bill, uh, brings the payment home, the money home or whatever to take care of whatever. The woman is doing the cooking. The woman is doing the cleaning. The woman is taking care of the house. The woman is taking care of the kids. The woman is running the errands. The woman is, is the woman has a, a literal job. The house is a job. And so I don't see the same type of comparison when you guys say, you know, it's the same thing. I, I really don't see that. Women by nature overgive and overdo. And that's usually the place that they're going to come from. If he getting up going out taking care of everything, she's usually holding everything else down at the house where he don't have to worry about nothing. Just by nature, and I'm not saying that men can't do it at all, because I've seen some men that can clean a house like, ooh, I know men that can cook food and cook, I mean, better than anyone. Like, I'm not saying men can't do it. There's so many single dads, single fathers and uncles and everything else who take care of the kids. But normally by nature, those are usually female traits. And those are usually traits where the man ain't doing all of the stuff in the house. Even if he is a house husband, he's not doing all of the stuff in the house that a woman is doing to the degree that she's doing it and for as long as she's doing it. Usually women do this for the entirety of the marriage. You see what I'm saying? There may be exceptions to the rule. And if the man is an exception to the rule and he's taking down, I mean, holding it down in the house and the woman is doing her thing out in the field and she's, and they're good and they're happy and they're both satisfied, more power to you. I ain't got nothing to say about it. It's not my life. But I'm talking about on average, on average, it's not typical, it's not normal. And the things that I just talked about uh, are things that can come up and that can happen in a relationship. Because as I said, finances is one of the main reasons and causes for divorce in marriages, especially here in the West, in America. So you guys, please let me know what you think. Please leave respectful comments. Um, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit all notifications so that you know when I upload new videos. You guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And until the next video, we'll see you next time.